Hello everyone and welcome to another Craft Planet video. Um, today I want to make a new home card so I'm, um, I've just received last week my order of Lavinia Dinkles and I've only had a little play with them um, so today I'm going to make a new home card using some of the Lavinia Dinkles and some Lavinia stamps. Um, I'm working on a six and a half by four and a half piece of multi-purpose card and the colours of dinkles I've chosen for the background um, which I'm hoping to get sort of a very early morning sunset I've chosen yellow, burnt orange, amber and chilli jam so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spritz with water my card first so I've given that quite a good spritz and I'm going to start with the yellow the yellow dinkles as i say i just got these last week my fall is very tight oh there we go oh i love how they react and i'm just going to gently tap some on that's the yellow i've chosen just warm colors um so i don't make mud um and this is the burnt orange and i'm just sprinkling on like sprinkling Salt or pepper on your dinner. Oh, that's reacting lovely. I'll just give it a little bit more spritz. I'll just push my card down. Next, I've got amber. Oh, gorgeous. That's the amber on. Oh, that's reacting lovely. I think I'll pepper that up with some um, chilli jam. Which I actually love. I actually love chilli jam. <laughs> nice with a piece of brie. Oh, and I'm just loving we're getting a little bit of puddling, a little bit of running going. It's all reacting beautiful. So that's my dinkles on. Very easy, nothing complicated. I'll just pop those back and give that a minute to react. And we'll just give that another spritz just to get some puddling. Oh, I'm loving it. So what I'm going to do now is, um, once that's reacted, just a touch more. I'm loving the darker pieces. Just run that that way a little bit. Yeah, I'm loving that. I'm just going to take another piece of four by six card, four and a half by six and a half, and pop it on the top and just give that a nice little press down. And as if by magic, I have two wonderful dinkled backgrounds. I'm just going to let that seep that way and let that run down the card that way. That'll just add to the add to the pattern. Now you'll notice I've got an edge here missing. All I need to do to um, to colour that edge, um, it's actually quite dry. It's just wet it again. Spritz it again, just take my paintbrush and just rub that in. I don't want any harsh edges on the finished results, so I'll just spread that out a little and that will dry beautifully. Right, I'll just run that down that way just a touch. And what I'm going to do with these, just to get more, more, um, to get more effect, I've got just with my basic salt, coarse sea salt in the grinder, and I'm just going to give them. Um, a good covering of the coarse ground salt. These I will take and put to one side and just let them dry naturally. And as if by magic, in the true style of Blue Peter, and here is one I created earlier. And you can see we've got all the colours in the background, but the little indent, what look like indentations, it's actually smooth are where the salt crystals were and they've absorbed some of the colour up and sucked it around them and made these little marks and they look like little pit marks and I just I love the watermarks and how gorgeous it is and those colours are so vibrant once dry They're absolutely gorgeous so this is going to be the base um, for a new home card I'll just find a piece of paper to put under that um, paper 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 
I'll stick some scrap paper under. And what I've done is I've pulled some Lavinia stamps and um, had a few thoughts. So I'm going to create um, a little scene with a house on. Um, I've got my hill masks, the Lavinia hill masks. So you get four in the packet and they're acetate strips um, cut into um, hill shapes. And I'm going to be using a few of them with some Lavinia inks. And what I've got pulled out, I've got um, truffle. I'm not sure how far in the picture I am. I'll just double check. I've got truffle, Sundance, and I've also got Emperor Red. Now I'm going to just zoom out just a little bit. Um, yeah, that's a lot better, isn't it? Let me move you in know, just a touch further. Yep. And if I just move that across, and I, you can see what I'm doing at the side here as well. That's perfect now. Right, so I've got Truffle Element Ink, Emperor Red Element Ink, and Sundance. And what I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with the Truffle. And um, I'm going to create some landscape. Just some basic landscape. Um, I'll have a very small one at the bottom. I have an idea in my head. Um, I know a lot of teachers pre-plan, but I tend to just go straight in with what whatever I'm thinking. These are my living year brushes. I just go straight in with whatever I'm thinking on these videos. And if it works out, brilliant. If it doesn't, then not so great. Um, I've taken off quite a bit of the ink from my brush on the lid, but I want this bottom one to be fairly dark anyhow. Just on my acetate, and I've just worked my way gently along. Yeah, that's nice and dark. Just work my way gently along, just kissing the paper really, just lightly. I tend to use little circular motions to get going, but then I, I sort of swoop across. I'm just pulling that brush down over because I do want some, this is going to be quite dark at the bottom. I'm just going to move that to another position and pop another one just slightly higher up. But I'm at the moment, I'm not putting any more ink on my, on my brush. Just coming along with my circular motions. This little brush is fabulous. It's a number three um, brush from Lavinia. Over the years, I've used all sorts of tools, but it wasn't long. I wasn't long into crafting when I realised buy the right tool for the job. You know, I've just added a little bit more ink to my brush um, because I do want the second one to be fairly dark as well. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. I'm going to stay with um, truffle once more, but I'm going to go to a different mask. I'm going to go to, I think, the medium mask. Let's have a look. Let's have a have a think. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go to the medium mask. And I'm going to bring that. Oh, first of all, what I should do is I've, um, I've got the house stamp. Um, and I should have done a list of names of what stamps I've picked out. This is my house stamp. And I think this is Henrietta's or Freya's house. I can double check. I've got my packets over here. And it's going to be the bottom packet. I can guarantee it. This is uh, Freya's, Freya's house. And that's stamp number 365, I believe. So let's have a look. I'm going to position the house so it's fairly near the top. Uh, about there. Just slightly off to one side. So I want this to come slightly under where the house is. No, I think I'm going with the smaller mask still. It's quite good. I call it um, auditioning. It's quite good to audition up your stamps to see. Now, there's a nice straight up piece there that will um, be beautiful. I just don't want to, on this line, I just don't want to just repeat the line before. I wanted to sort of have some. Um, I'm going to do my slight angle. Yes. I think we'll do it that way. So this one's going to be um, a little bit lighter than the others. So I'm going to sit my house up here on this one, you see. A little sweep in motion. Now I've got the, the line in that I wish. And um, 
and just pop that off. We'll pop the stamp back where I want the house, about there. That's brilliant. And I just want a little bit more ink. I'm just going to darken up some of these little patches just under the house. And just along from the house. I'll just have a little bit darker just there. It's just going to give it some depth from the... Um, it's going to give it a little bit of depth coming down from the house. I'm putting quite a bit um, of ink on. I'm just going to rub some off on my paper. And I'm just going to darken this bottom one a little. I might end up even darker again and just a little darker on the second one and just a little darker there I'm more than happy with that so where's my house gone my house is here oh yeah I'm yeah I'm more than happy with that one yeah that's super right so I'm going to go on and build up some background in the um oh some landscape landscapes the word I'm looking for and I'm gonna go to let's have a think I think the medium yeah the medium and but I don't want to sort of put it straight in line with the roof or just straight in line with the top or the door I sort of want to offset um, think about there and what I'm going to do this time I'm going to use the elements ink Emperor red I'll just pop that brush back in and get my red one. I'm using a number seven brush this time because I've got quite a bit of space here so I can flick down into it. So I've got my Emperor Red. I'll just brush off on my lid and on my acetate so it's not too, too much. <clears throat> and I'm just gently going to come across. Just my little circular motions again. Just kissing the paper. I'm sort of going to avoid the house area where the house would sit. So I'm concentrating on both sides. And then I'm just sweeping that down over. So that's number two. And shall I go bigger? Let's have a look. We'll pop the house on. <clears throat> the house is going to sit about there. That's lovely. I've got the edges darker. I think I'll go with the large. The large hill mask. Shall I go with the large? Do, 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 do. No, I'm staying with the medium. Oh, where's my... Oh. Just... Where have I put them? Sorry. I'm staying with the second size. And do I need two? Do I need two more? Let's have a think. I do talk to myself a lot. Right, what I'm thinking is I want to light that lighten up this side and have a nice sunrise sort of coming up at this side. So um right, I'm above the roof. I'm just gonna put a line in here, just a very light line in here so we know what's there. And then I'm going to dip at this side for the sunrise. So I'm just moving that stencil, that acetate, just across. Because I don't want it to be exactly in the same spot as it was before. Where am I going to have my sunrise? My house is here. I'm going to have my sunrise. Coming down from the house. Yep. I'm picking up a little bit more ink because this one can have quite a bit on. Off my acetate, circular motions. Not really pressing at all, but I do want these hills to be seen. And just down a little at the sides. And that's quite a bit of landscape in there for one little picture. So that was in Emperor Red. Yep. As I say, I've picked some colours out, I've picked some things out, but I'm not 100% exactly what's going where and how it's going to perform. Oh, please excuse the ink on my hands. Um, 
I'll just get my stamping wheel. For stamping the house. I'm going to do some stamping next. I'll just pop the house. Where did I see? Oh, that's going to be an excellent spot, actually. Just, just there. Maybe a little bit lower? No, no just there. <clears throat> I'm going to stamp this with Elements inks in Nocturne, which is a permanent ink. So if I decide I want to use any water-based product um, colouring the house, I'll be absolutely fine. This is an Altenew stamp wheel. Um, I've been using it for a few months. Very happy with the quality. Give that a nice stamping up. I shall just find my cloth and remove my over stamping. And pop that over and we'll give that a little press and let that rest for a little while just to let that ink sink in. And I need to stamp that one more time because I wasn't generous enough with my ink. With the stamp wheel, it's absolutely fabulous. I mean, quality stamp, a quality stamping platform. And um, yeah, you can stamp as many times as you wish over stamp with this one. And um, it's always perfect each time. You just fit that into the little grooves and press down. Absolutely fabulous for all the silhouette stamps. Oh, and that's absolutely spot on now. Absolutely perfect. So thrilled with that. Right. So this is my house. Um, we'll have a path. Um, let's see, I have got the um, fairy steps, I think they're called. I'll just have a look at my card again, so I'll tell you the right stamp. I should have made a list, didn't I? I can't see it anywhere. One tickety boo. Right, I can't see that, but these I think are called the fairy steps. And um, I'm just going to stamp those in black as well. Uh, let's have a look. We'll match that up with the door. And see if I want it straight or across. Or... Do you want it start? I think I'll start slightly further down actually. And that will fit in nicely. Just there. Put my stamp wheel back on. And I'll pick that up. Now, as I say, I'm doing in black again. This is an, actually an old ink pan. I should have picked up a juicier one. But I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to do, apart from some trees, I don't know if I'm going to do much in black actually. But as I say, that's the nocturne. And I'm just going to turn that over. Oh, a little bit over stamping again. Not my worst habits. And let's line that up. And just press down. We'll just hold that for a second for the ink to sink in. We should be fine now. And yes, that's perfect first time, that one. Excellent. Right, before I go any further, I'm going to use a mask to mask off the house. I've got one that I've used before. I've no idea if it's any sticky left on it, though. 
Um, this was just stamped on to mask it paper, which is sticky on the back. And hopefully this one will stick again. I'll line up the bottom. I will line up the top. Oh, I don't know if it's going to stick. It is. Now you'll see on my mask, I haven't, I haven't gone around the little swirls. Oh, that'll be fine. It's not 100% stuck down, but it will serve for the purpose I require it for. I haven't cut around the little heart or the swirls. That's fine. And I'm going to add some... Um, I think some height, some background height um, and some foliage. I'm just basically going to make a lovely house scene. Um, I just wanted half an hour to make this card and not to have to, you know, fret too much about what I was doing. So I've got the tall fir tree. Now I have got this packet in my hand. This is fairy fir tree number two. Yeah. Uh, Lavinia 477 and I think I'll start on the outside we'll have it quite high on this side I think yeah um no, quite a bit further in I think um, we'll have it just there I'm going to miss off inking just the tip so it sits on that line nicely I'm just going to avoid inking this tiny corner because I don't really want to put ink all over my platform. Or I can rub it off in a second. And the very bottom, I'm going to remove that ink as well. So with my cloth, I'll just remove that tiny bit from the bottom and I'll just remove that tiny bit from the side. This is, um, the mat in here is fully washable. Um, but if I can save stamping on it, I do. Yeah, that tree's lovely there. I'll just hold that for a second again. Let that uh, Versafine Claire uh, Nocturne um, sink in. Yep, yeah, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. And I'm going to pop this tree on again. I'm going to pop it on the other side, further down, I think, this time. We'll go with this line. And shall I go with that line or? No, I think I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go to about there. Um, that's the top. And I'll just pick that one up. I love scene building. I like to see the little scene come to life and I always think it's really magic when you remove the mask and it's all of a sudden you've actually got a creation, you know, a lovely little creation. I might get a bit arty with this one. I'm, I am going to colour in, but I haven't quite decided. I pulled out some Prisma pencils and some watercolour pens and some Poskas. Um that I might use. Excellent. So that's the tall tree. And I've got this one out, which is, let me have a look. This is not on the sheet. <laughs> This is this one. No, it's not. It must be on this sheet. Right, another slimline tree. I can't actually find the sheet that it's on. And I've got a cat intruder. <laughs> Little cat intrusion. Never mind. I'm going to pop that one on there. I think we'll have that one just about there. That would be nice. Yes, I've forgotten to shut uh, my craft room door. And, um, oh, we've picked up the mask. And my little boy has brought himself in. He'll get bored in a moment and go. I've got three cats. I've got George. Dex George is a tabby. Dexter is a ginger. 
Oh, this mask isn't going to stick. <laughs> as long as it's in place, I'll be fine with it though. I've used it about three or four times now. Just ink that tree up. And pop it over. Yes, I do apologise for the cat. Georgie, can you go please? Come on, come on, come on. Good boy, down you get. Good boy, good boy. Yeah, rookie error leaving the door open when you've got three cats. Come on, down you come. He only wanted some love from his mummy, but I have now closed the door. So I'll get the next bit done. Yeah, normally a mask would stick, but mine isn't today. So I think I'll have another tree here. No, no, because I've had an idea. I think I'll put a tree from the bottom. Yeah, from the bottom. About there. Not over the stem though. About there. No. No. I'm such a faffer. I spend most of my life faffing about what I'm going to um what I'm going to achieve. I don't know whether I want to go out to the edge. Actually, do you know I think I'll just do that. I'll do that. I think I'll come out the. Hmm. What I'm going to do, because I was thinking I might put a toadstool house there, so I might stamp that one first. I was thinking about bobbing um, this on the edge here. So I'll put that one on first. I'm going to put that one on in a colour so it sort of sinks into the background rather than fighting with the main house. Oh, wrong ink. <laughs> oh, I am definitely getting there. Uh, making this hard work for myself today. That's just a water wipe. I don't use wipes that have got any chemicals in them. If I have to use wipes, I prefer to use a cloth. Um, but that's just a pure water wipe. Right, I can start again with the um, the little toadstool house, which is going to secretly sit in the corner. And the reason I picked up the red ink is because I wanted to do a different colour. <laughs> and I think I'm going to use, I've got some first fine clairs here, I think I'm going to use Chianti. Oh, it's all peaceful now. I can get back to my... To relax and then just chilling with my piece of art. And I should just pop that little house there. Just let that sink in for a second. Yes, that's lovely. I like that there. Um, right, so I can go back to my tree because I didn't want to put the tree straight over the um right so i'm going with just a tiny bit of tree coming off the end here so it gives the impression that there is a tree there but we're only going to stamp the little bit at the top flip it over slot it in and just stamp that I just want to give a small impression that there's a tree there. Yeah, that's excellent. And I'll just wipe. I'll just wipe that off my stamp pad. Excellent. And we'll go for another tree, I think. Shall we go for another one? Yeah. I think I'll pop one off here oh it's a bit high that yeah i think i'll pop another one just there no oh, 
decisions, decisions. Do I want anything in there? I think I'll have one in second generation. Like that. <laughs> so just a little bit of tree just at the top there. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. And where I've touched, I'll just pop third generation just there. That's perfect. I'm happy with that now. I've got my trees in. And I think what I'll do is I will go with what's going to go around the house. Um, I think we'll have some flowers and some foliage. Um, let's have a look. Um, yep, I'm going to have... Um, actually, what I'm going to do, because these are small ones, I'm just going to remove this from the stamp wheel and just pop it on my bench. I do love the Lilavinia mats for stamping on, they just give a nice little bit of cushion. And I have got um, some wildflowers. And this one is summer foliage, it's two pack. And this is sort of looks just looks like a little wildflower. Lavinia 683. And I'm going to put these flowers in in different colours. So I think I'll start with um, I'll start with purple. Or not going to use the bottom of the stamp because it's solid. I'm only going to use the top. So I'm just inking that a little way down. And I'm just going to add that randomly in this space. Let's just create some, some foliage. Some nice little flowers and grasses and things, I think, all the way around the tree. Yep. I'm just going to give that a wipe and I'm going to put a couple of those on in green as well. I know they're not leaves, but I think we'll have a couple on in Oasis. Green Oasis from Versafine Claire. Have a couple of these in. Again, I'm still just using the very top of this, this one. Should have made a new mask for this video, shouldn't it? But I don't like to uh, get rid of anything until it's on its last legs. Not that I think I'm that mean, but I'll have a couple of these down here, I think. Well, that's building up quite nicely. I do enjoy seam building, I must say. And there's so many gorgeous um, stamps in the Lavinia range you can do this with. Uh, pop a couple just here. We'll have a couple coming down those steps, I think. Now I'll go on to something a little bit... F Shall I go on to some grasses? Mm -hmm. Do I need any more? Do you know, I think I'll just pop a couple down here. And I'll stay with the green. It's early morning, it's not quite light. Yeah. I think the flowers would be fairly dark. And in the morning, we have toadstools. So I pulled some toadstool stamps out. <clears throat> I've got two sizes. And I'll just have a look for the packet um, that I keep them in. If I can find it. Which, of course, I haven't got it on my bench. Oh, I have. These are um, little lamps, Lavinia 758, but I do think they just look like um, a small design like this. They just look like little toadstools. So um, we'll have some of those in. And I think I'll do those just in black. So they're at the front. Um, I can move that mask for a little while instead of it getting in the way. I'll start with the larger ones. And I think I'll just randomly stamp them. Um, yeah. I'm 
I'm trying not to put the heads on the tree trunk, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's nice. Put a smaller one in the space that I can see and put some on this side. I like to put them at different angles as well, not just straight. Just as there would be in nature, you know. I'll go on at the smaller one. I'll fill any little gaps with the smaller one. Do, 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 do. There. Oh, that's nice. That has just done that gap perfect. And there. Little one on the end. Oh, that's cute. Little one here. Maybe just a little one there. And one more there for good luck. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving how that scene's building up. What else did I pull out now? Let's have a look. Um, what have I got on my bench? Oh, yeah, I brought some birds. But I'm actually, I'm thinking about making this quite sunrisey. So I think what I'll do is I'll put the birds there. And I think I will stamp those birds um, after I've lightened up the background. Which would make sense because I don't really like... I'm going to probably use pencil or um, or normal colouring pencil or pastel pencil just to lighten this background area up. So I don't really want to um, put too much black on. And what I think I'll do is I'll start with a little bit, um, a bit colouring. So I've pulled some pencils out and actually I think I'll just use the things I've pulled out rather than going through all my bits and bobs. I've pulled out some pencils. I have got, when I can find them, I have pulled out some Prismas. I've got two greens. I've got apple green, nine two nine one two. Ah, now this is Chartreuse. But as you can see, I can't see the number on that one. I think it's 889. I've got a white. I've got a yellow, which is neon yellow. Um, I find the neons don't actually look neon when you put them on top of a quite a coloured base, um, which is one th one oh three five two browns. Uh, got burnt okra, chestnut, nine four three and one oh eight one. I might need some more, um, but we shall just have to to play that one by ear. What I'm going to do, which might sound a little bit crazy to some people, is I'm going to start putting some highlights in just with my white pencil. I know most of the time when we do art, we put our highlights in um, last. But I am just going to start putting some highlights in. Um, because I do want quite a bit of highlight on this one to... Um, because at the moment, with it being such a dramatic background, it's it's sort of looking still a little bit flat. Which is to be expected. So I'm just going around the house, the outside of the house. Bear in mind, I'm going to lighten up this area, sort of try and make it look like a sun a sunrise. And just a little bit on there. I'll pop some white through the middle. I try to avoid the lines, but to be honest, you you can't. I'm just I'm not pressing on really with my pencil. Um, I'm just doing that quite lightly to start off with. So I've got a line of highlight through the middle of the house. Actually, I will have quite a bit on this roof line. Because I'm going to shadow it as well. So we'll have quite a bit on that roof line. And I'm going to lighten this area. I'm going to lighten quite a few areas, actually. But you'll still see the lovely orange behind. Well, I'm hoping you can still see the lovely orange behind. Right, we will have some highlight over here. Already that's starting to lift the house a little. Right, I am going to um, lighten the inside of the house with the white pencil so just a tiny little squirrely motions squirrely like sort of circular motions very very light 
I still want to see the pattern of the, the salt and everything underneath. So I'm just going to lighten this just through, just to give a lighter base when I put a little bit more colour on. Especially putting some light over where I've got that pin line, which I should have let should have um, not gone quite as far with it, but it doesn't matter. No one will know. I'm not putting enough on that you can't see the black lines anymore, but if I did, you know, sort of obliterate the black lines, I will go over them again with a micron pen with fine liner afterwards. We'll pop some through the door, through the centre of the door anyhow. Pop some through the centre of the door. Um, I'm going to highlight the steps. Definitely a lot under the door. There's light coming out from under my door in my imagination. So I'm just going to highlight the steps as well. Just with a little light line. And I'll highlight that one. And I'll highlight that one. I'm highlighting more or less at the bottom of the step, not the top. Yep, I'm quite happy with that as it looks at the moment. Um, <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> I'm just going to come along this um, scenery and give it all a highlight. I'm just going over the top of everything that I've put in. It's just a light highlight. You won't notice that I've gone over the top when it's finished. And the reason I'm putting so much white on is if I want to put some, which I think I do, looking at it, if I want to put some colour on, put my colour on top of the white, um, the colour will be more physical than putting it on top of the orange. So this isn't a particularly heavy layer or anything. Um, yeah, it's given that a little bit of a highlight, hasn't it? And just in any little gaps here, I'll just put a little, just a little bit. Because that is through the... Do you see the trees? That tree is through there. And I just smudge those with my finger a little bit. It's normal pencil, but it does blend a little bit when you do this. Well, the prismas do anyhow. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's looking nice. Looking nice. I think I'll just lighten up some of these um, marks on the toadstool. Now, this is, I'm not pressing on. I don't want these to be a focal point, but I do want them to be highlighted so that. You know, if you look, if the eye does travel in that direction, um, you will see that this has been lightened up. Right, I think it's time to move on to my yellow pencil. Oh no, before I move on to my yellow, what I'm going to do is, I don't know where I've put it. Um, I usually have a piece, there it is. I'm just going to take my Nocturne and I'll put a little bit of um, paper under there. A little bit of scrap paper. It's not quite big enough. A little bit of scrap paper. I'm going to really darken the bottom edge. And what I tend to find when I do this kind of thing on scenery, it tends to um, make the you know the design pop a bit. I'm just going to, with this sponge, just darken up this bottom edge. And that's, as I say, that's the Nocturne Permanent Ink that I'm using. darken that up nice it's not very often that I use the the permanent ink to create shadow and darkness but that um, that needs to be pretty dark I think I'm going to go on to my yellow pencil I will turn it this way so I don't put my hand in that ink until it's dry and I'm just gonna where I've put the white over the scenery over the you know the, the background actually I haven't done it there I need to do a little bit there I'm going to um, add yellow because white can be quite stark when you're highlighting with white. So just in circular motions over the white, into the hill and above. Just in circular motions. This is a neon yellow because I think you do need, when you've got such a, you know, a dramatic background, you do need something with a bit of oomph to just work as a, as a milder pencil would. Just a little through there. So it just knocks the edge off the white, but it gives a lovely glow. I like that. I'll do the same on them all, actually. I'm going to do quite a bit of yellow at the bottom. I'm 
wherever I feel I could add a little bit more just to add some colour interest, maybe here. I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow. Maybe above this one, I can add a bit more yellow. This highlight will probably vanish, but I might spot a little bit of it. So that's just sort of knocked the sharpness and the harshness off the highlight. I put quite a bit of yellow in this space. Of course, everyone's will be totally different when you're making this, this design. If you follow the tutorial, obviously your background will be different, so you can decide where you'd like to add light and where you'd like to add shade um, to give it extra depth of colour. Oh, we'll start on this end. Now on here, I'm going to use, on this bit, I think I'm going to use quite a bit of this yellow. Might even put some green in. In fact, I will put some green in as well. Just to bring, just to highlight out that there are different depths of scenery in here. Not very good on technical terms, but I know what I mean in my own head. <laughs> and I'm sure by now, if you've watched a few of my videos or done any of my workshops, you'll know that um, I tend to ramble a bit. Oh, that's the steps. Miss the steps. I'll put quite a bit of, I might put some white on first actually in this space. Just gentle. You don't want too much pencil on. You certainly don't want in, that much pencil on that you've got a shiny surface. Oh yeah, you'll see that yellow. You see how the yellow bounces now, whereas before you could hardly see it. Careful that your ink's dry when you go on to um, your darker pieces. Um, up, especially at the bottom, so you don't smudge black up into your design. Just adding a little bit lighter just on the same level um, so that it can be picked up with the, with the yellow. Yeah, that's nice. So the, the white in effect on a lot of what I'm doing now, it's sort of working like an undercoat. That's the step, so we'll miss the step. I'll just add that there. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, I'm quite quite happy with that. I'm just gonna add some white because I want to do something with this under roof. And normally I'd be shading this quite a bit to make the roof uh, more three-dimensional, but I've had a little idea. I might go right, might go wrong. Um I will go over the circles with my micron pen at the end here because I have just gone coloured straight over you could be very dainty and colour in between the lines but I'm terrible same at these bottom bubbles stones little, little bubbly stones I'll just give those a just a little light one over in yellow Oh yeah, I'm quite happy with how that's going. I'm going to highlight um, the mushrooms, the toadstools. I'm going to highlight them in white. I think I'll add, no I won't because I don't want to bring any, I don't want to sort of drag the eye to the, to this little house. I just want it there as a, something you just spot after you've, you know, looked at the image and got the design. So 
when it was in white. As I'm sure you know by now, um, normally people will go through and they'll do all the all the shading, then all the highlighting, then all the you know all the colouring, all the shading, all the highlighting. I sort of jump from one to another. Um, that's just how I uh, how I work really. It's not for any other particular purpose. I've got to get another stamp. I'm just going to leave that stamp at the side because I think I'm going to add a little bit of fine foliage in a brighter colour once I've got this how I want it. I'm just going to lighten up here. So I've got that side already lightened. And I'm going to lighten up down the edge of the tree as well. And a little bit in there. Definitely here. And just up there. A little bit more there, a little bit here. So we've just got some lightly applied white here and there um, so that I can go over and just add a little, little touch of yellow. I'm not doing yellow on top of the houses, on top of the houses, on top of the, the little toadstooly mushroomy lovely little things. I do love Lavinia stamps, they're some absolutely stunning ones. Got quite a nice collection now, actually. Right. So yeah, that's looking quite um quite nice. I'm gonna go on to green and I'll start with the light green. And um ooh, I'm gonna come in and do some of these little circles in green. Just a few of them. This is chartreuse and as you can see from a pencil i'm the meanest person in the world i do have pencil extenders honestly but actually getting them out and putting them on the pencils <laughs> that's another story isn't it and we've got some green i think i'm going to bring some green across the steps so i'll just move this way i'll pop some green under here and i'm going to bring some green across the steps i'll probably put some darker green on there as well have a look. Ooh, a little bit just there. Yeah, I'm liking that. And we'll pop some green just where I've lightened up those last patches. Oh, sorry, I hope I'm in shot. Because there would be other bits of green um, foliage in between the flowers, wouldn't there? With this being a lighter colour, it just adds that little bit of... Um, that little bit of lift to the darker areas. I would normally be holding my pencil quite a way further up, actually. <laughs> I wouldn't be normally holding it quite so far down. But unfortunately, I um, I have got a new one as well, you know. Unfortunately, I've picked up the small one to work with. I'm just adding bits of bits of the green here and there and that's just working to sort of lighten and brighten all the areas i'm going to give the white a rub because i still want it there it's going to end up being very faint yep we'll pop some yellow on now back to my neon yellow and i'm just going to lighten up all the top areas of the lights of the light well they are actually they're called fairy lights aren't they and just any more yellow where I fancy. So just a whole myriad of yellow, green, white, highlighted highlights and lighter colours. Yeah. In this front bit of sort of garden. Mind you, I must admit, I was thinking about putting a sentiment on here, but I haven't left much room to put a sentiment. <laughs> I'll work something out, though. They always do.
And then I think we'll go on to the brown, the brown, the brown, the brown. I'm going to do some brown on the door. And what I'll do is I'm just going to go as before. Oh, and I'm going to do the pencil snapping. Oh, goodness me. Sorry about my hands. I'm just going to do the outside all the way down. with just a little dot of brown of chestnut, which is the darker of my two browns. And I will use the darker on the outside, that side, and just on the outside of this side, this down, and then on the outside of this side of the door. And on the inside, I'm just going to go around the top. I've got a little bit across the top. What am I going to do with that? Oh, yeah, well, I'll just sort of, I'll bring me up. Yeah, and that'll be highlight down the side, down the bottom, back up. Actually, I'm going to have a little bit of green in my door. Don't know why, just took my fancy there. And then I'm going on to my lighter brown and I'm just going to fill in the other half of those little blocks. With the orange underneath, it doesn't take much of the brown to give you a nice, a nice contrast. I'm not blending, I'm not doing any fancy technique. I'm just touching the paper with the pencil very lightly and then just a little bit up on the inside I'm going to put I don't know if it'll work with the white pencil um, a highlight above the knocker above the handle it has worked with that so that's excellent it's gonna be crazy though yeah I quite like that door yep quite happy with the door which all oh, right have I done no, I haven't done the roof all right roof 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 let's have a look yeah, I'm going to go with something quite simple, darker on the outsider, mid-brown and white. Um, I'm going to go over the lines if I need to colour any in, if I need to bring any black back, of course, I'll do that um, with my fine liner. As I say, I'm not, um, I'm not pressing on, just little circular motions back and forth, back and forth. If you press on, you will obliterate all the black lines that you've stamped on. And then I'll go to, actually I think I'll have, I'll have this line darker as if that's the first line. And then my lighter brown, I'll just come into that white. As I say, really don't press on, otherwise you will end up having to redraw the whole stamp again. I'll have some brown on that top as well around the top there and um, I'll just take my white and I'll just blend that across a little bit very lightly I am I may look like I'm just scratching I am doing a tiny little circular motion as I'm scratching as I'm, so I'm not scratching at all as I'm going back and forth I am doing a little circular motion just to give that some definition in the middle I'll just give that a nice nice rub with the finger now I do want to lighten this up just a little bit more yeah. I don't want this to look as all blends into the um, the background and it won't once I've finished <laughs> now stalk on the mushroom I'm going to totally highlight that all the way down and I think they're light enough in there and a little highlight just over the top just a little bit I think that's enough in that area so if I've got all my colouring done now I will I'll know that in a moment I will consider putting a much lighter area at the top just using the yellow and white to give the impression of a sunrise um i'm going to bring a black shadow in here a little bit maybe a couple of little grasses there but i haven't put my grasses in yet i want to put those in in a moment so i'm going to see the sunrises in this corner which i've got a tree here but we can see most of it so it's going to be up here so as before with the white tiny little circular motions 
So you can still see if they're stamped behind, you can still see the stamp, sorry, not tiny, circular motions, but very, very light. And we're just going to lighten up. That sort of area there, over your tree. Because the light would be coming through the tree if it's got a light behind. Now I'm going to go for a mask, a mask. So I've got a little bit of light going on. I'm going to go for a circular mask if I can see where I've put them. I'm going to go for a circular mask. And judging from that, I think the medium one. Yep, yep, that would be really nice. The medium one. How far up do I want this sunrise? Oh, quite high, about there. I'm just going to whiz around that in white. I'm not doing a definite harsh line. There will be a line, but it's not a particularly harsh one. And yeah, I'm sticking with still my circular motions. I haven't actually just drawn around it. I'll put the white on because I'm going to do this in yellow. I haven't got a point on my pencil. I've got it. It's fairly blunt. I've got it upright. And I'm just adding circles. So you can just see that there's, actually I'll have a little bit more. It's not quite light enough. Actually a bit more white here. Yep, that's perfect. Now I'm just gonna brighten that up with the yellow. I'm leaving the white line, the sort of a white line meets the mask. I'm leaving that line. I'm just taking the edge off where I've got a line at the other side, but brightening it up with the yellow. Brightening up, I'm going to lighten that a little bit. Just lighten that with the white. I think we'll have this quite light here as well. I love this, um, the uh, pattern that was created with the dinkles at this side, so I'm going to leave it. Because the sunrise hasn't quite got as far as this bit yet, probably. Well, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And on the inside of the sunrise, I'm just going to leave a little gap. I'm not going right up to the edge. I thought that would have been light enough, actually. It's not quite light enough, so we'll just put a tiny bit of the white on. Just little squiggles. Tiny little circular motions. Now that's a good base for what I'm aiming for, but I am going to change to, if I can see it, my white pastel pencil. With a pastel pencil, I'm just going to hold it towards the end with it quite flat. And I'm literally, I'm not going to this round the edge from the mask. I'm still keeping the edge on the mask because I want to see that little half moon. And I'm just literally putting the pastel. So all this area would be a lot lighter if it's the... And I'm just going to take my finger and I'm just going to smush that around. Lovely technical terms I use. So you can see I faded out the top of that tree quite a bit, but it is in the background. And this is the point where I'm just going to pop some little birds on. And this is, <laughs> let's see if I can find the packet. This is birds and it's 097 by Lavinia. Obviously, they're all by Lavinia. I don't know why I keep saying that. First, I find Claire Nocturne. And let me see. Let me see. How many birds do I want and where do I want them? Um, I'm going to put them there. And I might just have some second generation just there. And I don't want to detract anything from over here, but I might have some there. So that was just second generation, just to give 
I'm actually really quite happy with how this is shaping up. I mean, it, it tends to come more boom, boom, boom once I get the Posca pens out, but um, that looks nice. Now I've got the little grass and I um, didn't want to put this on before I coloured and put the highlights and whatever in because I tend to find if I do that, this grass, the fine stamps, if you're putting them on as foliage, will disappear. They'll just vanish. So I'm going to put this on and I'm going to put it on in the Green Oasis Face of Fine Claire to start with. Oh, nearly forgot. Where is my mask? This will not stick this time, but I'm not under any illusions. We'll just, I'll just hold it down. And I'm just randomly popping some of this grass. Um, the first couple I am stamping all the way down to get a little stem going on for the higher ones. Yeah, that looks great. And I'm only going to do half the, I'm only going to um, ink half the stamp and just wipe away. I'll have a little touch there, some second generation there. If I'd stamped um, this and then done all the colour over, honestly, the little ones would just vanish. Have a little bit there. Uh, maybe some more, actually. I think I'll have a little clump. Oh, over stamping again. Little clump just here. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, they look sweet. And maybe some more grass here. And shall I have some? Now this is going to look very odd because I'm going to do something with the stamp that I'm going to use it upside down. Oh, I'm just going to pop a little bit of green there. And I think I want a little bit more near this house here. So we'll have some of that. Oh, that's better. I love seeing all the different levels and just for a little more added interest we'll pop them, pop them just a few just at the bottom. And maybe some just at the edge. I keep forgetting I can do second generation. <laughs> there. I'm happy with those now. So we've got a little bit of extra foliage in there and it actually stands out and we can see it. I'm actually beginning to think if I'd gone with the um, the wildflower, um, the trio stamp set that I used, which I did in black. Or did I do it in? No, I, I think I did it in dark. No, I did, it in, I did it in black. If I'd gone with that in green and these in black, it might have had a little bit more impact. But I am happy with what I've got so far. I'll just take the mask off again. And it's Posca pen time. Yay! Oh, I do want... I'll do it with Posca. Posca pen. I've pulled a fine white, a medium white, and two... Well, they're all ones. I think they're all ones, aren't they? All sevens. All sevens. All ones. I've pulled all sevens in... Um, white, yellow, and green. Bright green. Um, which is it's actually nearly a fluorescent colour, and I've pulled a, a pin nib type, you know, the pin nib ones. We're doing a few little bits of fine lining. Now I'll start with this one. I need a little bit of scrap paper. Yep, that's working. I do like to try them first before I go to project. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to completely highlight this window on the toadstool. So I decided I wanted to not necessarily make the toadstool stand out vastly, but um, so it does catch the eye at some point and doesn't just totally fade away into the background. And I'm going to do the top as well. I will put those black lines in there, which I've just drawn completely over um, in a while. A little bit more there yeah i like that 
I'm going to start off by just dotting all my little mushrooms. Now this is going to look, let's see if I'm right, yeah, this is going to look quite stock and, and sort of in your face, but just trust me, it won't look stark and in your face when I'm finished, because I'm using, I've done this quite a few times um, on different projects, where I put quite a heavy undercoat of white, and then I use another colour, uh, more mushrooms on this side and there, and it just dots off the the stark brightness. I'll just turn to this side. If you have any requests for stamps you'd like me to use, I have got quite a lot of Lavinia's now, or scenes you want me to create, or you know, if you're thinking about making a card and certain colours, or if it's for a certain occasion. I'm always looking for ideas to, you know, sort of inspire me. Yeah, that's a little mushroom there. Actually, that would be that would be quite nice when I'm thinking about it. If um, if you're following me and you are starting to watch my videos, because I haven't got that many yet, um, if you have a favourite stamp and you would like me to use it in whatever form or fashion I feel, I could do. Um, that'd be quite good um, for me to maybe do something completely different with it that you would never dream of doing. Sometimes the Posca pen picks up the ink from behind and I'm kind of hoping that it will on this window, it has on the toadstool which looks lovely now and I'm hoping it will on this window as well. I'm just going to give that roof a highlight, I don't want it to be too strong. I'm just going to give them that and I've got it off. I'm just going to go over that door highlight and give that a blot. Let me think. I will add some highlight on the steps again. I'll just over highlight. I'm just going to do a little line and run it with my finger. It's more or less where I put the highlight earlier, um, just a, a little bit more pronounced. To the original to the original original highlight um, um, I'm quite happy with how that's looking I've got to highlight all these little flowers that are around the door and under the eaves I'll start at the bottom I'm just sort of going to highlight them with not quite a half moon um, but they're all going to get done And just before it's dry, I'm just popping my finger on because I don't want it to be sort of like spot the dot. Just a couple of those because I think I'll do some in yellows and greens as well. This is coming together really quickly, actually. Sometimes I can sit for I don't know how long, just pondering and thinking, how am I going to do this? Am I going to do that? What colour shall I do this? Shall I put this in? And auditioning so many stamps. But with doing the video, what I did was, before I started, I actually pulled the stamps out that I thought I might use. I've got a few others on the side that I haven't used. But I pulled out the ones that I thought I might use. A little highlight just in here. Move across. Yeah, that's quite, quite a bit across, so it looks nice and light there. Oh yeah, I'm quite happy with how that's looking so far. Uh, do I want any more white Posca? I can always come back to it, I suppose. I think I'll have just a little bit around this side. Quite a pronounced highlight. I'm not pressing on at all with this Posca. I'm making the smallest line that's humanly possible. And 
even though it would be in the shade, I'm just going to put a tiny line under here just to highlight. Just because in real life things would be in the shade. They don't have to be in fantasy world. Um, definitely don't have to be in fantasy world. I'm quite happy with that. So we'll put my small Posca down if I can find the lid. And I can't. I shall find it after the video. And I shall go to my yellow. I'm going to start doing some dotting. I'm going to dot all of these little ones on the eaves. Just little dots. Just down under that window there. A few more just in the background here. Let's dot on all of these. I think it was actually, um, I was watching, I think, um, one of Tracy from Lavinia's videos. And um, I was never one for adding dots. So I just sort of, you know, add that little bit of interest. And um, I think I took the inspiration of adding dots from Tracy. One of Tracy's videos in the early days. And I'm a dot addict. I mean, to some people, a dot's just a, you know, a dot, a tiny little insignificant thing, but it can add. I mean, this looks like there's little wildflowers all over the side of the house coming up from these little stones. And by adding a bit of colour to the stones, they look as though they've got flowers trailing down over them. Right, don't put the yellow down yet, Jane. So all the areas at the bottom on the scenery where I've put the yellow, I'm just going to put a few yellow dots. I mean, don't go totally mad or you'll, you would kind of regret it. I'm just going to touch these a tiny bit with my finger just to take the edge off from being too much. That was too much hat. That was too much putting my finger on. Don't want any in the dark. And I'm not doing a straight line of dots. I'm sort of... Um, Doing some quite high up, some in the on the line. Um, I'm just varying them. Miss the step. I hope nobody misses the step and falls. <laughs> oh, no. There's quite a few in that one. I find this so therapeutic. Oh, I've missed one of my little toadstools. Hasn't got any white dots on it. I've got some little dots and little flowers all up here. I'm going to go quite high up here, actually. I'm not doing them really close to the side of the house because we've got these dots on the house and I don't want the house just to merge across the page. So I'm just sort of trying to be a little bit mindful. And I think that's another toadstool there. So I've missed that one as well. Hello. Little few on the edge of the steps. Oh, yeah. Now, to some people now, you think I'm going overboard, but I'm not. <laughs> and on all of the toadstools where the white is, I'm going to just dot indiscriminately with the yellow. I will hit a lot of the white dots. Some I will, some I won't. But it will just take the edge off the white dots being so, so dotty dotty in your face. So I'll do a few. And then I'll just give them a little touch with my finger. Spread that paint out just a little bit more than so it's a sort of a squashed dot. And if you take too much off with your finger, you can always go back and put a little bit more on. They could actually um, be little lights. You put a highlight under them, they'd look lovely. I've never done that. 
And you see how we've got this sort of stark dottiness and this is not quite so, it's sort of pushed back a little bit. It's like a little fairy house, isn't it? I suppose it is a fairy house. It was stamped like, to be Freya's house. <laughs> but she's not really... She might be a fairy. I can't remember off the top of my head. I haven't actually got her in my stash. That is one I would really like. Right, each of the... Well, not each of the windows, but on a couple of windows, I'm just going to put a little... A little yellow line. And on these ones, I'm just going to put... Two little lines on that one and one on that one. I'm just going to highlight that highlight again just to bring that out oh yeah this is starting to look like sort of as if it could be going into a little foresty fantasy area uh we've got the yellow one what else can i do what else do i need to do just to give this a little bit extra i think what i will do i'll just um get my green and where i've got a lot of the dark flowers I'm just going to give them a little bit of dot. Not as much as I've done with the yellow and white, just an odd one here and there, just sort of. And then just smudge the dots down a little bit. So it just looks like there's a hint of colour going through the darker ones and that just lightens, lightens and brightens. Because this is sunrise, it wouldn't be dark, dark, would it? at the beginning of sunrise ah right now i've got a couple of splodges from my posca pen never fear i'm just going to get a piece of kitchen roll and i'm going to make a little cone a little little point i'm just going to pop that on there it will have marked the design And just wait for a second. And then I'm going to use the other end of it, just on the end of my finger. And I'm just going to press on that for a second and lift it out. And that's less less heavy not as heavy as before but i don't really want two green splodges that don't match anything else in the picture so i'm just going to add a few yellow dots around and then just a few more just to make it look like it's part of the picture and i'm happy with that i will just take the thick of the green off the posca before i do the other side <laughs> uh, just a few little dots on the dark ones I love the fact that, well, I love that someone once said to me, Jane, there's no mistakes in art. Do not, you know, I'll be making something. I'll be satisfied with how it had gone. It wasn't quite the right colour or it wasn't. I splodged a bit of paint where it shouldn't go. Or, you know, they were like, you know, just don't stress. There's no mistakes in art. You can try and correct it and make it as exactly what you were aiming for before, but you're more likely to make it worse. So just go with it. And now I've got my splodge green. I'm just doing a couple of little dots without splodging them just to get the vibrancy of the colour from the pen. But when I say a couple, I just I do mean a couple of dots. I don't mean sort of dozens of them. Right, I'm nearly there. Nearly, well, I, think, I think what I'll do is I'll have a bit. I'll have quite a few green dots coming up this side. Just something a little... A little different in that little space around the door there so it's not quite as big i'll just continue those off so that they, they sort of disperse themselves maybe come out of the house a little bit yeah that's nice so i am going to just um pop over with a micron pen um, a micron pen and just anywhere where I've actually obliterated the black lines totally, which I have here, I'm just going to pop them back in. Just 
And I mean, when, you, when you're when you popping the lines back in, if you don't get the lines in the right place and they're not quite the same, it seriously does not matter, does it? Just going to darken the inside of that do door there so that highlight looks a lot brighter and pop just around. Just a little. I'm using a number three pen. All of these that I coloured over just need just a little. Now I'm not looking for the exact spot, you know, the exact bubble. I'm just adding the bubbles back in where I think they were. That just adds a little depth of colour back in there as well. I do like a fine liner pen as opposed to a roller ball because they dry quicker. But if you have problems with your fine liner pen being very hitty missy and picking up too much wax from your pencils when you have one over pencil, I recommend a uni ball eye pen. But you have to be very careful that when you're going over pencil that you don't put your hand back in it immediately because it does the uni ball eyes do take a little while to dry. But I actually prefer a fine liner. What I could do, um, let's see, I've got, I'll just grab my uni balls. Um, that's a fine one. They come fine, fine, medium and broad. And I prefer the, the fine, if I'm putting detail back in. You don't want to be doing anything too thick. You see, they work every time because they're a roller ball. Um, with fine liners, you have to sort of, have a scrap piece of paper by your side and just um well, it's just a few dots back where they were there uh, yeah you have to um scribble on a scrap piece of paper when you're using a fine liner just to get the, the pen to reactivate again, to work again, and take off the wax from the, the pencils. Just adding a few little dots up this side, a few there. It just gives that little bit of um, a little bit of shading that looks lovely. Put the side of the house back in. Pop the side of the house back in. And the steps, the steps need um, a little bit of work on them. I did obliterate most of the steps, so I'll just go over a few of the lines, just just randomly, just quickly. I'm not sort of trying to redraw the stamp in its entirety. I just want to highlight those, maybe give a little bit of a little bit extra, just as the step meets the top of the next one, just to give a little bit of depth of shade under there. Yep, we've got a little bit of light coming out from under the door. Happy, happy, happy. A um, couple of stems I'll just draw in on the bottom here so they can be seen. Um, no, I'm not going to do any over there. Um, the roof looks fine. Now, what I do now, because I'm really happy with this now, what I do now is I tend to sit back in my chair, find my phone, snap a pick. So when I snap the pick, I then go and convert it into black and white. Now I look for whether or not I've got light and shade. Um, I haven't purposely put any light and shade into this um, in sort of the correct places. If I had put correct shade in, I would have had this darker under here. I would have had this highlighted as I have, this side darker. Um, I haven't actually gone to put all the rules of shading um, into this one. I have done a little bit. In fact, I think I'll just add on this side. Yeah, that's done it. A little bit brown and on this side. And just under there, a little bit brown. And just around that door. And you see, I could spend hours. I'm going to, I am actually going to stop because I am very happy with how this is. It's a card. I mean, I do like my cards to be nice. Um, but it's not sort of, it's not going to hang on a wall for time and memorial. And I'll do a little, a little shade line down there. Just 
she didn't look very happy with that. I put a little bit of shade under the under the mushroom. I mean, literally, you could be you could be light dark, light dark shade. I mean, I put a little bit. I'll add a little bit of highlight just coming off the edge of the steps and that'll make the shade look darker. We could, I could colour, I could sit and I could add this little detail, that little detail. But to be quite honest, I'm not really sure on such a small piece it's necessary. In fact, I'm not going to do it because I don't think it's necessary. Just smudge that highlight in just a little bit and that one in just a little bit so they're slightly darker. Now there's one piece on here. I don't like how this is standing out quite so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my yellow pencil. I'm going to add just some yellow pencil over. Little circles. And that's just muted that down because I would prefer to have this. Well, I didn't prefer to have. I wanted this window. Oh, I'll use a smaller one. I wanted this window. Just to stand out and wipe that a little bit more. I haven't considered this before, but I think I might just add a tiny little bit of white splatter because it will pick up all over the piece of the background colour. I don't know if this white is juicy enough. Oh, it might be. Just add a little bit. Oh, not on the top. No, it's, it's given us bigger splatter, so we'll add it everywhere. The shape at the bottom. So I'm really happy with that. Um, if you've enjoyed my video, please... Um, Please give me a thumbs up and a like um, and a share. Is that what they say? Like, thumbs up, like, share or comment. Do you know, I think this could actually take a small amount of glitter. Could take a little bit of glitter. But anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed that craft planet. I've been on the craft planet today. Oh, I'm going to make you dizzy if I do that. And I will, um, on the Craft Planet Facebook page, when I've made this up into a card, I've no idea where I'm going to put the sentiment. I've, I've gone well OTT with this one. But when I, um, when I get it made up, I'll pop a photograph of the finished piece onto the Craft Planet Facebook page. Thanks for joining me today. I know it's been a long one, so well done. Take care. Bye.